and the planet. The zodiac? Yeah, what, what, yeah but there's, God, there's hey, a particular God, formula. Hey. Yeah, there we go. What was it? What's in it? That's it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. <sighs> Um, the four, four, we start with um, uh, a division of four, then we go down to three, two, and then the unit, the, the one. Okay, so name the four energy currents within which the planets operate and the planets in each of these currents. How, what, what are, what's, the, uh, what's the job of the planets? I'll give you a start. The sun. Diane, and the moon. is that all? Moon. <clears throat> okay, what would be the next one? The social planets. Okay. Which are? Ooh. Venus, Mercury, Mars. Mercury's not. Mer so Mercury's not, cool. yeah. Mo Mercury's not a social planet. Oh, it's a convertible planet. Yeah, it, it is that, but that's it, that's not the, um, that's not the uh, category that we're working with right now. Neptune, Venus, Mars, Pluto, Neptune. Pluto. Okay. Yep. Okay, Pluto. There we go. Um, what else? There are two more. Intellectual. Again, Intellectual. And they are? Mercury and Mercury. Earth. And Uranus. And the last? The business planets. And they are? Saturn and Jupiter. Not the sun. Oh, Saturn, Saturn, Saturn you said. Saturn and Jupiter. Thank you. Excuse me. I didn't hear you. Excuse me. OK. Do the signs have similar characteristics and what are they named the signs? What are the four groups of signs? You mean by element? Yeah. So fire, what are we looking uh, at? Yeah. Sag. Okay, what's another group of signs? Earth, Taurus, Leave. Virgo, Cap. Water. Pisces. Cancer, Scorpio. And last and certainly not least, air. Gemini. Libra. Aquarius. Oh boy. Now, Rodney, I did look at those those charts. And what I realized that I did, is I changed the order in which I listed the aspects, but I neglected to change the order in which I, I listed the keywords. And so that's why it, they are um, uh, in the wrong order because exactly. every place else they're in the same. And we'll go over that lately. What planet, planet defies category? There we go. You can see it. And can you find a justification for this cheekiness? Mercury? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And wh why, why would it be? What? Because it's electromagnetic. And what else is it? It's masculine and feminine. OK, so uh, if it's masculine and, and, and feminine, what? how else, how, how do we? Um, What's the word that we use to describe that? Hermaphrodite? Nope. Yeah, that's true, but uh, no, that's not the word. Bipolar. <laughs> that too. Yeah. It's neither. Convertible. 
It's convertible. It's yeah. It's it's neither masculine or feminine. Feminine. It's convertible. Uh, it has to be able to get along with everybody because it has to be able to deliver messages to everyone, and everybody has to be able to understand what's going on. Anything else? Well, because yeah, because it acts. Acts as a conduit for information. Oh. Now, needless to say, some you know, different planets, different signs um, behave uh, more agreeably uh, in in when the, uh, Mercury is is uh, residing there, but. Um, your Mercury is a, another planet that has how many uh, how many signs are connected with Mercury? Two, and they are of what elements? Is it they one element or is it air and Earth? Air and Earth, right? We're so air certainly Earth. is you know is the quick communication, um, the ability to jump from topic to topic and to be able to cover enough of what is needed at the time. And the air is something that becomes more concrete, the information that you wanna use in order to, to broaden uh, a perspective. Um, both Virgo and, what, what do Virgo and Gemini have in common? They're analytical. Yeah. What else? Intellectual. Huh? Intellectual. Yes, they're both, in, yeah, they're both intellectual. They have something else in common. A characteristic of, of a, a, a sign characteristic. They're mutable. They're both mutable, right? <clears throat> so, um, which is again, another characteristic that's perfect for Gemini because they can, they don't have to hold on to the information. They don't have to, this is my opinion and that's it. You're not, I'm not gonna budge. Um, whereas a, a mutable is a little bit, more open to um, expanding their base of information, their base of knowledge and, and, uh, and, and methods of communication. I, I think I've told you this, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised because as growing up, my sister was very laid back, she's a Virgo. And I didn't realize how much she liked to talk until you know, now. We're walking distance from each other. This is the first time in uh, since we've been adults uh, that we're walking distance. Uh, we live walking distance from each other. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Um, I certainly you couldn't tell by um, by how I conduct the class, but I'm not much of a conversationalist. Uh, I, I'm very happy to sit and just watch. I remember being at a party once and. Uh, you know, people were talking and I was listening. I didn't have anything to say and it was fine with me. And then somebody said something to which I decided I needed to make a comment. And another person says, oh, she speaks. <laughs> and, I, <laughs> and, and I said, yeah, um, I don't have to. I, I, I'm, I was reminded of Shakespeare, you know, I'd, I'd rather be thought of as a fool rather than open my mouth and prove it. So there we go. Anyhow, so both, what is that symbol? Moon. What is this? This moon. is the moon. And what is this symbol? Mercury. Okay. Both moon and Mercury influence mentality. They influence the mind. What are the similarities and what are the differences? The moon is about processing. The moon is the mother. <clears throat> Yeah, moon is mother. Mercury is the messenger. Um, uh, yeah. The moon processes emotional complexes. Whereas Mercury is more on the surface. Okay. <clears throat> would you, um, would you, Say that's superficial? I mean, 
I don't want to make, because I'm a Gemini, so I don't want to make myself sound like I'm dumb. <laughs> no, no. It, um, but it is more, it's, the, it's more, yeah, it's more of a superficial application, whereas with, um, whereas <clears throat> with cancer, like cancer, when you think about it, cancer is the mom. So that's processing very, like a multitude of emotional things at the same time. I yeah, that, that that word is great is great because the moon is more a processor, whereas Mercury is a right. communicator. Now, if um, uh, yes, Cancerians can make quick decisions, but Cancerians like to take information and digest it first, mm -hmm. and then make a decision. Uh, and, and, and that's certainly what the moon does is processing. Um, the moon also talks about capacity, how much you can hold uh, the broadness, uh, um, breath rather than broad. And um, Mercury is talking more about methods. Mm -hmm. So they both, they both, eh, peep, uh, there is a, a, a tendency to associate the moon just with emotions, but it is not just about emotions. Yes, it does take whatever it is bringing in and, and uh, uh, does um, color it with emotion. However, it is also talking about the mentality. It is talking about the capacity uh, and how of holding on to and processing information. Mm -hmm. Mercury is uh, 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 investigating, uh, is uh, quick uh, and um, has to be able to talk to everybody. Everybody has a moon, everybody processes information differently. Um, and, and Mercury gathers the information so, and the moon processes the information. M uh, Mercury um, disseminates information. And, and the moon holds on to it and sees how, and works with it. So they both talk about mentality. Remember that the moon is not confined to emotions. It's also talking about the mentality. So as you're looking at looking for different things, um, uh, as you're broadening your understanding of the planets, uh, remember that the moon is also about the mentality as well as Mercury is about intelligence and dealing with communication okay what is another way another category up here in in question number two we said that the moon was uh, at the sun and the moon were vital planets what else what is another way the sun and the moon are often described luminaries individuality yeah. and personality a-R-I-A-S, it's going to tell me if I spell that's right. And, and what else are they called? If they're called luminaries, they're also called... So when you, talk, when, you, when you hear somebody talking about the lights, they're talking about the moon and the sun. Which house or natal position exerts a significant influence upon the overall makeup of an individual. First house? First. Yeah. Oh, and what's... Uh, Aries? What else do we call it? Ascendant. Yeah, the ascendant of the first house. Great. Okay, now I want you to take out, I'm, I'm gonna sh make another share. I would like you to um, uh, take out your, uh, where is it, damn it? There it is, okay, Ex excuse me. Excuse my, my, my language. Let's work with this stuff. And we're going to, we're talking about the table of essential dignities.
And um, you know, I, I as I was saying while we we're waiting for um, for the hour to arrive, this is an exercise that you you might do every day. You know, take five minutes every day just to, just to you know put an H, a D, an E, or an F in here. And as you're doing that, you're going to naturally recall the description for the planets and the signs, and so that will assist you in in studying or it, uh, it can assist you in study. If you remember when I pre presented the planets, I only talked about the home and the exalted, the home exalted and harmony. Um, how come I didn't talk about detriment or fall or in harmony? Because they're the opposite. Because so. the other things are ex exactly are the opposites. Okay, now, so let's, let, let's, get, let's get busy. What do we have here? So the sun is in is in is at home where? Leo. Okay. Okay, the moon is at home where? Cancer. Mercury is at home where? Virgo. Virgo. Okay, where else? Where else is Mercury at home? Gemini. 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 Venus is at home where? Taurus and Libra. And Libra. And Libra. Okay. Jupiter is at home. Sagittarius. And now so you see. put that under Mars, not Aries. Um, I Venus, sure do. But... That's right. I'm so glad you're here, Rodney. What would I do? I, I'm not being facetious. I am. Uh, uh, oh, so, sometimes life is a real challenge. <laughs> okay, so now Mars is at home where? Aries and Scorpio. Aries. There we go. You see the pattern? Mm -hmm. Okay, now we've got Jupiter. Is at home where? Sagittarius. Sagittarius and Pisces. Yeah, Sagittarius and Pisces. As that was before the discovery of which planets? Pluto. Pluto. Neptune for Pisces. Neptune and Uranus. Uh, they were um, discovered in the 18th. 19th and 20th centuries. Okay, Saturn is at home. Capricorn. Any place else? Capricorn and Aquarius. That was the original. Because now we come down to Uranus. Where is Uranus at home? Aquarius. 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 Where is Neptune at home? Pisces. Pisces. And where is Pluto at home? Scorpio. Okay. Isn't that a wonderful pattern? I'm going to change the colors of uh, um, of this one and this one because uh, although they do exert a definite influence over those signs, they are not considered. Um, if you talk to people, they will tell you the modern rulership of Aquarius and Pisces rather than the ancient rulership. However, remember that they, they still, they continue to have an influence over both of these planets. So now, um, where is the sun in detriment? What's opposite Leo? Aquarius. Aquarius. What's opposite Cancer? Capricorn. Capricorn. What's opposite Gemini? Sagittarius. Okay, what's opposite Virgo? Pisces. What's opposite, where are we, Venus? Taurus. Scorpio. What's opposite Libra? Capricorn. 
uh, Aries. What's opposite Aries? Libra. <laughs> and what's opposite Scorpio? Taurus. Okay. Jupiter. Sagittarius and Pisces. Nope. Gemini? Yeah. And how about Saturn? We're talking exaltations now? Or detriment, sorry. Detriment, D is for detriment. Uh, okay. So, yeah, it's going to follow the same pattern. What's opposite, the, you know, uh, um, Uranus is at home in Aquarius, so it's in detriment in Leo. Uh, it's at home in Pisces, and the opposite for, of Pisces is Virgo. Virgo. And Pluto's opposite is Taurus. Now, let's talk about exalted. Aries is exalted where? Sun. Sun? Yeah. So what's opposite Aries? Libra. So the sum is at full in, in Libra. Taurus is all exalted where? In the moon. Mm -hmm. So it's not at, it, at its best when we went in Scorpio. Mm -hmm. um, Mercury is exalted where? In Aquarius. Yeah. So it would be at its least favorite place where? Leo. Uh-huh. Uh, Venus, exalted where? In um, Pisces. And its opposite? Venus opposite in... Uh, Pisces opposite is? Virgo. Virgo. Mm -hmm. Virgo. Um, where is Mars exalted? Capricorn. Yeah. How can that be? That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. How can that be? Think about it. Why would Mars be exalted in Capricorn? In an energy to get ahead, to climb up the hill. Yeah. But Mars, we're talking about aggression. You know, it's, it's, uh, Saturn is 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 uh, the the metal associated with Saturn is lead. Lead is the heaviest metal. How can a, a, a planet that that uh, uh, speaks of energy and uh, emotion and aggression be exalted in a planet that is described as lead? A, a sign that can be described as lead. Okay, think about it. Anyhow, so where is where is the, uh, Saturn? Um, where, I, I I messed up someplace. In Mars. There we go. So, what's the opposite of Capricorn? Cancer. Cancer. So these are things to think about when you're going through these through the chart, and these are things that are that are going to help to solidify your understanding and 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 allow you to um, have the descriptions of the planets at your fingertips. Okay, Jupiter is exalted. Answer. Mm -hmm. So its fall is in. Capricorn. Capricorn. Saturn is exalted. In Libra. There's another one to think about. And so it's in its fall in Aries. Uh -huh. Uranus is exalted. Gemini. Mm -hmm. So it's in its fall. 
Sag. In, in Sag. Uh, Neptune is exalted. Hi. Uh, Sagittarius. Sagittarius. So it's in its full. Gemini. In Gemini. Pluto is exalted. Leo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's in its full in. Aquarius. So look at what you've studied. You studied the signs. You studied the planets. And you've also studied their um, opposites. You studied their home, the, the, the um, detriment, the exaltation and the fall, just with this one exercise. Uh, it, it, you know, it, it'll, it'll help you remember things uh, a little differently. We're gonna get another share or our, and um, we're going to go now, we're going to go to tonight's lesson. And we're going to start the slideshow. So there are four factors of astrology. Again, we're looking at what? Jod Hevahe. We're looking at the pitch or the tone of, of, we're looking at the quality or resonance. Just a minute, let me get my notes on. Okay. The pitch of the tone is the planet. The planet talks about the pitch of the tone of astrology. The quality or the resonance of astrology is the sign and how the sign behaves in the planet. The acoustic conditions are planet, sign, houses, houses. Yep. The acoustic conditions are the houses. Um, with, with the uh, the houses that have the best sound, um, you know, the best acoustics are the angular houses, and they are Aries, four, four, seven, Cancer. And ten. One, four, seven, and ten. Um, oh, think yeah, of them right. as one, four, seven, and ten, and not necessarily Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, although those signs are positioned there in a natural horoscope. And think of them as one, four, seven, and ten. And after, uh, and after you think of them like that, think of the planets that are on those cusps in the chart you are examining. And then think of the influence that Aries, Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn might have on that. There's lots, there's lots to consider when you're delineating a chart. And then we're talking about the harmony or discord, and that is the topic for tonight. A harmony or discord are the aspects. There are 10 aspects. And we talk about aspects, we're talking about their orbs. Aspects have a quality and an orb, and an orb is the distance between planets. And each aspect has its perfect, the, 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 the chart that, that I've given you shows the aspect when it is perfect. But there are two kinds, that, uh, there are two ways of looking at aspects. One is an applying aspect. That's an aspect that is approaching perfect. And then there's another aspect, the other way of looking at an aspect is called a separating aspect. And a separating aspect is the aspect as it leaves perfect. So a conjunction talks about an aspect is an aspect that has a zero degree orb. So when two signs have, are in the same, when two planets are in the same sign at the same degree, that is a conjunction. However, if we have sun in Aries at five degrees, Might it be possible to also be conjunct with sun in Pisces at 29 degrees? Yep. Yeah. No, the sun can't be in two places in one chart. Sure it can. Because that would be approaching as a five degree orb. If Aries is at five degrees and, um, and Pisces at 29, let's say 29, 59, 59. That's five point 
um, that approximately a five degree orb. And if you look at the chart that says aspects, you can see that um, the sun, the lights, the luminaries have wider orbs than all of the other planets. Then all, yes, than all the other planets. The orb for a conjunction with the sun and the moon are 15, 13, and 11. So the sun, I mean, I mean not the sun, uh, Mercury, let's, my mistake. Sun in Aries at five degrees, Mercury <laughs> in Pisces at 29 degrees. Are, these two signs are conjunct, and that is an applying aspect because the uh, 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 number of degrees between the signs is getting smaller as Aries continues to move uh, and Aries, I mean, as Mercury continues to move closer to Aries. That's an applying aspect. That would continue to be an aspect even with, Air, with uh, Mercury in Pisces at, um, at 26 degrees. That's the widest, so the influence wouldn't be as strong or is pronounced, but that still would be, would, could be considered a conjunct. And then again, if we have Aries sun at five and Mercury Aries at uh, 12, that is a separating aspect because Mercury is moving away from the sun. Mm -hmm. It is still five, it, that's a six degree uh, difference. A, con a conjunction has an orb between eight and 15 degrees, depending on the sign. I mean, depending on the planet and the house location. So that's what we're talking about when we talk about orbs. Question. You know, most often you're going to get an agreeable aspect between earth and Fire signs, most often, not all the time. And most often you're going to get a, a agreeable aspects between earth and water. Most of the time. Please, can you repeat that, please? Okay. Most of the time you will get an agreeable aspect. A harmonious aspect between air and fire signs. Because they're 60 degrees apart. Uh huh. That that's yeah, and they're both masculine. And most of the time, you're going to get an agreeable aspect between Earth and water. They're both feminine. And yes, they that they, they, they're more likely to be sixty degrees apart. You're going to get agreeable. Most of the time, you'll get agreeable aspects within an element. So the fire signs generally agree with each other. Air, earth, water, those, the elements, the signs in the, each element generally agree with each other. What's the difference? The orb. The orbs are gonna make the difference whether or not you're gonna get, but generally when you have uh, um, planets in the same element, they generally have a softer aspect. Signs that have the same quality. And what are the qualities? When we talk qualities, what am I talking? Movable, fixed, and mutable. Right. So what can you, um, what can you surmise about qualities? What do you think is going to happen with qualities? Um, Cardinal signs are going to be what? Pioneering. Yeah. But they're also going to be what? To each other. What kind of aspect do you think they're going to have with each other? Movable? They're going to be square. Square. Oh, yeah. square. Uh, oh. Movable signs are the signs that have the similar qualities are generally have difficult aspects. That makes sense. So all movable signs will have a difficult aspect. Cancer and Aries don't, may not necessarily get along. Mm -hmm. Gemini and Virgo might not necessarily get along because they're both 
Mutable. Mutable. And it's obvious why fixed sides can't get along. <laughs> no. <laughs> my way, my way, me, 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 me. Okay. However, depending on the orb of the aspect will make a difference. So now we've gone to, um, we've done uh, four. Now let's do three. We're talking about aspects. There are three kinds of aspects. There are discordant aspects. Discordant aspects are the ones that are challenging. They're the ones actually that, the, that provide you the most opportunity for growth because you have, to have, you have to figure out how to solve a difficulty when you're working with a discordant aspect. The discordant aspects are square, which is a 90 degree orb. I'm, when, I'm, when I quote the orbs, I'm quoting the perfect orb. A square, a semi-square, which is half a square, and that's 45 degrees. A sesquisquare, which is one and a half right angles, that's 135 degrees. And then the opposition, it's 180 degrees. And that's all, you know, you can find that all on that aspect chart that I've given everybody. So now we look at the harmonious aspects. And the harmonious aspects talk about natural abilities you know, or talents, talents that you don't, talents most many times that people take for granted. So in developing a talent that you have, you have to work on it. You have to work on it. You have to work on it consciously because it's something that you have and, and you don't even think about it. You mean you, you can't do that? Think of something that you, you, you have to catch yourself when thinking why somebody else couldn't just naturally do that. That's one of, that can be indicative of, of planets that have a harmonious aspect in your chart. And the harmonious aspects are 120 degrees, which is a trine, half a trine, 60 degrees is sextile, and half and a quarter trine, which is half a sextile, 30 degrees, a semi-sextile. Now I've named seven aspects. And how many aspects did I tell you there were? What about 150 degrees? Yeah, but how many aspects? In there are 10 aspects. So if we have discordant and harmonious, Think of the three categories that we did dealt with with the planets. Mm -hmm. What do you think is that next um, category in which we're going to put aspects? It would be like convertible. Perfect. Yep, convertible. Mm -hmm. And they depend on the planets uh, involved, whether or not they're going to provide um, harmony or discord. And the convertible planets are, I mean, aspects, are the conjunction. And, you know, I worried you to death with the conjunction. That's a zero degree orb. The opposition, which is 180 degrees. No, I mean the inconjunct. And the inconjunct is 150 degrees. And then uh, this other aspect is an aspect of, that you use when comparing declinations. And that's uh, the, 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 the height or uh, uh, parallel? It's, it's a parallel. It, it's, it's, it, um, it, Declination's latitude, isn't it? Yeah, north and south, right, exactly. Thank you. And um, look at the blue book. You wanna know more about declinations, check out the blue book. So now that we've, did, we've done four and three and two with, and convertible, we have to do the aspects as a whole. 
And here we have all of the aspects with their keywords. Now this chart is not as complete as the one that you have that talks about aspects. And on the bottom of that chart, it says aspects are calculated using the shortest distance between planets and never in contrary direction from that usually followed by the planets as they move through the zodiac. So when, um, it, when we look at an aspectarian, um, we always start with the sun and we look at all of the aspects to the sun. Do we have to look at the aspects to the sun when we start looking at the aspects to the moon? No, because that's already done. So when you start the aspects, you're always going in the order in which they appear in the, in the zodiac. Sun, Moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Luto. So you always calculate it that way because once you calculate it for one, the, the others come are, are there. So here we have all of the aspects with their prominence, their keywords. Well, um, you might um, want to um, use index cards and, and uh, just write the aspect, uh, write this information on a, uh, a, a uh, an index card that you can just look at. Because when, you, when you're calculating the orbs, you wanna get that more detailed chart because it shows you the, um, the orbs uh, of the planet, both applying and separating. So, Let us skip now. I, I, I want you to, to get your, I'm going to uh, uh, show some new shares. Because these, the, these are the documents that I want you to have ready now. And of course I didn't pull up that document. Anyhow, I want you to have ready, um, the document that says calculating aspects. And unfortunately I didn't um, pull that up. I also want you to look at, I want you to take out the aspect calculation form. It looks like this. And you see we have the planets in the order in which they appear both uh, horizontally and vertically. This has two pages to it so that you have a little room to do some math. Then I also want you to pick up this chart. The chart that has Uranus in the ninth house with Virgo rising. I sent you a document, it's charts for aspects. Yeah, charts for aspects, it's a PDF. And we're gonna do this chart here. And uh, let me, I'll, I'll, I'll get calculating aspects for you. Open in Acrobat. New share. This is the calculating aspect, aspects document that I want you to look at. What you're gonna need in particular is this information down here. And I'll show you how that applies. So we have the calculation <laughs> form. We have the chart with Virgo rising and, and Uranus and Taurus at the top of the chart. Oh my goodness. I'm looking at a different chart. Don't want that. Okay, I'm happy now. So, what we're gonna do first 
Um, I'm, I'm going to be working mostly with this uh, aspect calculation form. And I want you to have the uh, document with uh, Uranus at the top of the chart in the ninth house in Taurus. So we're going to do this. Off. Say that again. I didn't. I ran out of printer ink. The one that I have is from Memphis, Tennessee, March 25th, 1942. Uh, no, no, no. Not a problem because uh, we're going to put in the sign. We're, we're, I'm going to have you write these things in right now. Because what I want you to do uh, in the box, it says for the sun, we're going to put in the position for the sun. And the sun in this chart is in 26 degrees. I'm not going to put in the degree symbol. 26 degrees Aquarius. Whoops. What's going on? Oh, I know what's going on. Okay. AQ, and I'm just gonna make my life easier because it takes too much time to get. Why did you do that? I'm, excuse me, please. 26 degrees Aquarius, 14 minutes. Now we're gonna convert that to 360 degrees. So Aquarius 2614 becomes, if you look at the chart, you see you're going to add 300 degrees to Aquarius. So now this becomes 300 degrees, 14 minutes. 300 degrees, 14 minutes is the same as 26 Aquarius 14. I mean, 326, excuse me. And I took a nap too, you know? Okay, yeah, Vanessa, you are doing it a different way. What do you mean? Then I learned, then I learned. We were talking about that before we started the meeting. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So now let's look at the moon. The moon in this chart is in the 12th house. And it's at six degrees, Leo. Okay, uh, it's at six degrees, Leo, trust me. I, I'm, it, six degrees, Leo, 10 minutes. In order to change this to 362 and put it on a 360 degree wheel, we have to add 120 degrees when we're dealing with the sign Leo. So six degrees, 10 minutes, Leo becomes 126, 10. So you take that and put it there, but also take it and put it up here. Mercury in this chart is in the fifth house and it's at zero degrees Aquarius, three minutes. So if we're gonna change that to 120 degree and put it on a 120 degree wheel, we're gonna add 300 degrees to the degrees. So this becomes 300 degrees what are you doing? This becomes 300 degrees, three minutes. And then take that and put it up here.
So let's just start right now. Let's get the, um, uh, we, we need to, let's find if the sun and moon are an aspect to each other. So what are we gonna to do to, to, to find that? Let me see if my pen is gonna work. Oh, goody, 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 okay. So we're gonna take 326, 14, and we're gonna subtract 303. Now these are two separate problems because you, you, you um, Rodney, you have a question. Isn't 303 Mercury, not the moon? Okay, thank mm -hmm. you very much. You're absolutely right. Oh God, what's going on today? Okay, so we have one. One, oh, this is perfect. One, yeah. 20, six, 10. So these are two separate problems. The difference in, de in minutes is four minutes. And the difference in degrees is what? 200. 200. Is there any aspect that, is, uh, that shows 200? It would be an opposition, but there would be 20 degrees. The, yeah, so board. yeah, the largest yeah. one that we have is an opposition. So um, if you have a result that is greater than 180, you subtract 180 from it. And here we subtract 180 from 200 and we get 20 degrees. So the orb between the sun and the moon is 20 degrees, four minutes. Can everybody agree with that? Mm -hmm. Now, look at your aspect table. And the closest aspect to that is a conjunction. Yep. Mm -hmm. I, I'm sorry, Vanessa. Yeah. Can you, can you explain how you got the 20 degrees again? I subtracted 180 from, tw from uh, 200. Okay, why did because you? Because because 180 degrees is the largest or uh, the largest aspect we have. Got it, okay, all right, thank you. Okay, so does this, the sun is in what kind of house? The sun is in a Caden house. That's another thing that, it, that you might put in here. The sun is in a Caden house. So I'd put C here, the moon is in a, Caden house. Isn't the sun in Aquarius? And that, isn't that yes, right? but it's still in a Caden house. It's in the sixth house. Oh, okay. Sorry. Mercury is in a succeeding house. And if you look at your aspects chart, you see that there are different orbs for the houses. Each house has a different orb. Oh, I did have it. Isn't it wonderful? Um, we're going to have like multiple Look classes this. working on this, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. Not. A, yes, we are. So this is the other chart that I want you to have, the aspects chart. And you see here we have a conjunction. A junction, <coughs> conjunction is zero degrees apart. But when you're working with planets in Caden houses, the difference between that zero degrees can be 12 degrees for the other planets, but 15 degrees for the lights. Mm. When you're in a succeeding house, it's 10 and 13. And in a Caden house, it's eight and 11. So you have larger orbs, a larger orb difference for the sun and the moon than you have for the other planets. 
Yes, I don't understand how when we got 20, it would be a conjunct. Because that's the, it, it's a small, it, it can be a conjunct or it could be a semi sextile. Because Those it's like right two. in the middle of the two, basically. Right. Uh huh. But the one that is, that, that is possibly likely might, well, there is no aspect between the sun and the moon in this chart. Because the orbs, um, there's nothing that can be 20 degrees apart. And they're both in Caden houses so that when we're looking at the sun and the moon in this chart, we have to look at this. We're looking at, uh, at the last column. If the sun and the moon were 11 uh, degrees apart, then we could say it's conjunct. If there were only two degree, if there was only a two degree difference, then we could say it was in semi sextile. Let's go back. Isn't this fun? Aren't you having fun? Okay. Now, here we go. We want to do Sun and Mercury. The Sun is 326.14. These are easy ones. And Mercury is 303. So these are two separate because you can't subtract minutes from degrees and you can, can't subtract degrees from minutes. These are like, you you're working, when you're working with degrees and minutes, it's like working with fractions with mixed numbers. Do you know what a mixed number is? A mixed number is one is like one and three fourths. So you have one whole number and three fourths a fraction. Now, if you wanted to, you certainly you can do this in your head because you know, um, I, I, I picked a, 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 a common one. But uh, the difference between one and three fourths is a quarter. But in order to get that, you'd have to convert the whole number to a fraction. And how would you convert the number one to a fraction? It would become <laughs> four over four. And four over four minus three over four equals one fourth. Well, that's what we're going to be doing here with degrees and minutes. We're gonna be doing something similar with degrees and minutes. Rodney, don't look like that. I know you can do this. You do after <laughs> so don't, don't even try. Sheesh. Okay. So now, come on, come on. There we go. So we have here 11 minutes. And we have here 20, oops, 26 degrees. What's the closest orb to 26 degrees? Semi-sextile. A semi sextile with a four degree orb. Why four? Um, because the semi sextile is 30 to... degrees. That's right. Okay. And is a four degree um, orb in a Caden house acceptable for a semi sextile? I don't have that sheet right in front of me. I'm sorry. I ran out of printer ink. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, it's not. Um, Okay, I will, I will adjust that. Uh, let me make a note um, to split my screen and have more than one document on, on screen for next week so that you can see the calculation form and the aspects form. What do you mean not acceptable? Meaning like we did the calculation wrong or it's not a good harmony? No, what I mean is it's not within orb. So 20, uh, if you're looking at, at the aspect chart again, let me get it, let me get it. I will get it. Mercury's a semen house, right? Gee, I don't know where it is anymore. Oh, here it is, there we go, excuse me. Mercury 
is in a succeeding house, but we're not calculating the, the aspects for Mercury. We're calculating the aspects for the sun. Oh, because the sun is... Um... Because that you do the sun first. You do okay. the sun as it relates to all the planets first. So whatever planet you're doing first is the house you're going to use, right? Correct. Okay. All Correct. right. I just wanted to... Right. Now, 26 degrees, um, 11 minutes. They, we can't fudge anything. That, that's four degrees in a Caden house. Look at semi-sextile. We're looking at this, this line. Oh, yeah, we're looking today. at the Caden house. We're looking at the orb for the house. sun. The orb for a semi-sextile for the sun in a Caden house is two degrees. So we would have had to get 28 degrees in order to say that the sun mm -hmm. and Mercury were semi-sextile because that's two degrees. There's a two degree difference between the perfect orb of 30. Um, oh, I'm so, wrong. so does that mean they're semi some error <coughs> in conjunct they are no there they there is no aspect between the sun and mercury oh just no aspect right now i don't you know and i that's why we're going to do more than one class on this right. <coughs> why why are they not aspect like does that mean that they just don't because they're not their their orbs are not close enough okay but so they don't place enough okay. influence on each other to make it a difference in the reading of the chart. Correct. Okay. Thank you. They have no direct communication. They might have communication to other planets, but they have no direct communication as far as aspects are concerned. Okay. Aspects are aerials that um, pick up radio fashion, astral um, energies. And contribute to the harmony or discord of uh, of an interaction, and the harmony and or, and discord of the building of the astral body, the spiritual body. Yeah, you know, like a like a radio. You know, okay, I'm gonna date myself, but maybe I don't know. Maybe you don't know. Back in the day. Um, televisions had aerials on them and you had to put the aerial and sort of the, and sometimes you you had your little brother stand by the television with his hand on the aerial because that's the only way the picture would come in <laughs> you know? so, so that that's the energy coming in to the television from uh, the broadcast station so what are the, the broadcast stations are the planets and the aspects are the aerials that pick up the broadcast Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. The aspects all have different orbs. The, these, where it says degrees apart, these are the perfect orbs. But the orbs can have a difference either less than or greater than the perfect orb according to the numbers that are in these last six columns on this chart. <laughs> this is why we're doing the next three lessons on aspects yes please i'm lost okay <laughs> like add a zero onto that for me <laughs> yes clifford yes we put aluminum foil on the antenna too in in addition to having your little brother stand by the television and and, and he had to look look a television and crane is next. We also used to put aluminum foil on the television. And sometimes the television could only work if you put it in one corner of the house because that's where it picked up the energy. That's what the aspects are doing. They're picking up the energy. They're picking up the broadcast. I have a quick, this document on online right now, do you send that to us? Because I can't find it in mine. I will send it to you again. Okay, thank you, thank you. Sure. Thank you very much. Sure, not a problem. Okay, so let's go back to this lovely document. 
Now let's, uh, uh, Venus in this chart is in the fifth house. The fifth house is what kind of house? Wrong pen. Fixed. Uh, and, and it's in the fifth house. And the fifth house succeeded. is what kind of house? Succeeded. It's a succeeding house. So we're gonna be looking at the middle column of that aspect chart. Venus in this chart is at 15 degrees Capricorn. <clears throat> <clears throat> 15 degrees Capricorn, 22 minutes. In order to convert that to a 300 degree position, we have to add 270 degrees to the 15 degrees. I'm so lost. So that becomes 285, 22. Oh, this is wonderful. I love this one. Wait, wait, wait. Um... Why? Look at the calculating aspects document. Let me go back, um, back and forth, back and forth. It's a good thing. I, I'm sorry, I'm so lost. I'm, um, okay. Oh, so you're this writing down here. 1558, not 1522. Say that again. Venus is 15 degrees, 58 minutes, not 22 minutes. Thank you. Yeah, that was Pluto. That was 22. Oh, see, what would I do without Rodney? I, I, I really do appreciate you. Thank you so much. He's our human calculator. No, he, he's, 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 my, uh, he's my editor. He's my proofreader. He's my backup. Okay, so this is perfect. So now we want to calculate the aspect between Venus and the sun. The, uh, the sun is 3, 26, 14. And Venus mm -hmm. is 2, 85, 58. Can we subtract 58 from 14? No. Oh. No. So we're going to have to borrow a degree from the 326. How many minutes are in a degree? 60. 60. So this becomes 325. We add 60 to 14, and this becomes... 74. Now we can subtract. Oh, you know, math was not my. Uh, yeah, that's why we're doing several classes. <laughs> I'm so lost. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, yeah. Um, so on that, read that calculating aspects document. That is important. So prepare you prepare you can prepare yourself differently for next week if you take a little bit more care in reading that document. There are how many degrees in a circle? 360. Yeah. We the, the circle is divided into minutes and seconds. And on a clock, how many minutes in an hour? 60. 60. How many seconds in a minute? 60. How many seconds in a minute? 60. 60. Okay. Well, the same thing works here. There are 60 minutes in a degree. And there are 60 seconds in a minute. We're, we're not going down to the seconds, but just remember that uh, when you're borrowing a degree in order to be able to subtract the minutes, mm -hmm. you have to convert the degree to minutes. And you convert the, uh, there are 60 minutes in a degree. So when you borrow a degree as we've done here and change it from 326 to 325, mm -hmm. we've taken that minute, converted it, uh, we've taken that degree 
converted it to minutes, and one degree equals 60 minutes, and then added those 60 minutes to the 14 minutes of the original position, 36, 14. So now we have 325, 74. And now we can subtract. 58 from 74 is? Um, 16. 16. I taught elementary school, so yeah, I, I got these because they did. <laughs> what is it? Okay. And now five from five is? Zero. Zero. Eight from 12 four. is? Four. Four. And this becomes a three since you borrowed a 10. This becomes, um, oh. you have to pay it back over here. You borrowed a 10, so this becomes two. And now it's 12. How so two how from two is 40. Wait, 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 wait. So um, just do regular subtraction. 325 take away 285. Okay. Use your calculator. Okay. But that, I'm confused about where you're taking the 16 and adding it back onto the 40. I'm not. Oh. Why did I think They're two that? separate pieces. 40 can, is the degree, 16 are the minutes. Right. You can get minutes by pulling them out of the degrees so long as you pull them in 60s. Correct. You have to convert the, the degree to minutes. So the 14 turned into 74 because you added 60, 60. minutes to the Perfect. 14. Yes. Okay. So it's like when we used to pull 10s out, but now okay. we're pulling 60s out. Exactly. Yes. We're working on a base 60 rather than a base 10. When we're working within each one, we're working on tens. So when we're working in the one that we just did, when we pulled, when we borrowed, we borrowed a 10, not a 60, because we didn't have to pull from degree to minute. If that makes sense. No. We, I, we did regular math, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. After you finish borrowing right. and mm -hmm. make things big enough, you, you're doing regular math. Right. After you make things big enough to be able to subtract from each other, then you're doing regular math. So look at your chart. I'll get it for you. There's a 40 degree difference here. We're still de dealing with a Caden house. 40 degree difference. What, do, what, has, what comes close to 40 degrees apart in this semi sextile? No. Nope. Or a semi square. A semi square. With a five degree orb in and a, a five degree oh, orb in a cadent house isn't going to happen. In a cadent house, are we within orb? Well, no, we're one degree no, we're off, close, one. but we're not within orb. If so, we were in a succeeding yeah. house, we would be okay. Yes, if we were in a succeeding house, but what planet are we calculating aspects for? The sun. The sun. Oh, so. A semi-square with the sun in a Caden house has a four degree difference between 45. So if it, was, if it were 41 degrees apart, or if it were, if, if, no, if we were at 41, plus 40. and that's applying because we're getting too perfect, or if we were at 49, it would be a semi-square. If it were 49 degrees apart, it would be a separating aspect. So are we again at no aspect? So again, we have no aspect between the sun and Venus. Venus. Now in this chart, Mars, is in a is in the fifth house, so it's in a succeeding house. 
and it's at 15 degrees Capricorn. Oh, well, you, you got the idea. 40 minutes. So we're you would add, add two, 270. We're at 270. So this becomes 285, 40. What can you tell right away? You should be able to look right away and you know that when you get there, what are you going to have? Look at the planet right above it. What's going to happen? What's going to happen between uh, Venus and Mars? Oh, they're conjunct. They're conjunct. And you don't even have to do any math for it. <laughs> so the symbol for a conjunction is I got to remember this. And the reason we know they're conjunct is because they're at the same degree. They're it's both 20. at the 15 degree. Right, right. Mm -hmm. They both add up to 285. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. However, we're now looking at, we want to do, um, well, actually, this we, we, we're going to do the same thing here. We have. 326, 14, 2, Did Vanessa freeze? Mm -hmm. It looks that way. I guess her internet huh. just dropped. Yeah. Do you want to give her a few minutes to come back in? Mm -hmm. We're getting close to, sorry, 6.30 my time. <laughs> I, I have a question and I don't know how I miss this, but how are we getting to 285 and why from 15? What are we using to get there? There's the calculating aspects. Whoops, you can't see. This is my background file that has the add degrees on the bottom of it. So depending on what the sign is, that's the number you add to the number of degrees that the planet is in the sign. So this is? So for the 285, because it's in Capricorn, yeah. with 15 degrees of Capricorn, you add 270. Okay, so 270 plus 15, it's that's we get 285. Per oh my gosh, thank you so much, Rodney. <laughs> You're welcome. I didn't learn to do it that way. I learned to use the sign numbers and then the degrees and minutes. Yeah, that's the way I figured out. Yeah. I unmuted myself. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, Rebecca. Yeah. 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 I didn't have a chart or anything. I was just listening and the more I was listening, the more confused I was getting. So I didn't, um, I didn't get to participate in this, or at least. Did, not, did you not get um, Vanessa's email? Did, did she send that today? Oh no, it was not that, wasn't it? Was it? So the calculating aspects and the aspects handout um, were both on the Google Drive from the first class. We just never got to them. But we uh, yeah. the handouts from the first class. From the very first one? 101A. Uh, you guys had the chart there? They had the chart in there? It, well, it didn't have the horoscope chart, but it had the aspects table and the calculating aspects document. There's Vanessa. 
Rebecca, I didn't have it either. Oh, okay. I was like, oh my God. I'm not either. I'm trying to keep it along. Thank you. Sorry, yeah. Vanessa called me and I wasn't paying it. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. I think she's on her phone. We'll catch you. Can I share something with you guys? Can I share something with you guys? Uh -huh. um, there's this really amazing documentary that's um, being released right now. It's called The Changing of the Gods. And hey, hello, all... can, you, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, my internet went down. I had, uh, it just, it just cut out. So I, uh, I'm waiting for things, I'm waiting for things to boot. Now it is 9.30, so, so class is, is done. Uh, suppose it, it, we, we have already met the, the time for class. Um, we're gonna be doing the exact same thing next week. The exact same thing. So I want you to make sure you have a copy of Calculating Aspects. Yeah, here we go. <laughs> Here we go. These are the documents that I want you to have. One that says calculating aspects looks like this. Can you see it? Anyhow, you want calculating aspects. You want the you want the chart that has a zero that has one Virgo 45 degree rising with Uranus in the ninth house. Can you send it you also again? want the aspects chart for next week. Can you see that? Yes, yeah. can you send that again? I will send all of this information again. And Thank you, you. want to put the work that we've already begun in a safe place. Yes, it is. <laughs> Or although you can you can you can uh, you know, have another cal aspect calculation form and just do it again because it's going to take a little practice. I I I happen to enjoy math, so I th I think this is fun. I'm sorry, but uh, it, um, and I I also know that uh, this can be challenging because um, we have to borrow and. Um, and change degrees to minutes. And then we're looking at uh, two terms that you can perhaps research are applying and separating aspects. There are two different, two different ways of looking at an aspect. There's an applying aspect, an aspect that starts, that's less than the number of degrees perfect and is approaching the number of degrees perfect. And that's applying, I'm sorry. Applying is less than the number of degrees perfect and approaching perfect and separating, which is greater, uh, leaving the number of degrees perfect, getting bigger than the number of degrees perfect. Remember on that aspects chart that there are six columns at the, um, on the right most side. Uh, the, the, the chart has symbol, name, keyword expresses as, and those are descriptors, their nature, the application as they're dealing with each other. Then it says degrees apart. We have angular, succeeded, and cadent houses. And within each angular, succeeded, and cadent houses, you have orbs for the planets and then orbs for the lights. Vanessa, all of that's in Hore, isn't it? astrology in that course the eighth course yes okay um the the calculating aspects document is not that's uh original okay yeah that must have been so one if you don't understand it i understand because i wrote it and sometimes i am in a world of my own <laughs> I think I, it might be in my PDFs, but maybe I didn't print it off. So I'll look again. Is um, everybody else left? Then are you the only one here? I'm here. Everybody's here. Oh, okay. Good. Oh, I'm here. Great, great, great. 
Oh, yes, I see it now. I see you now. So, yeah, my, my, uh, it's usually very reliable, but today, of course, it decided to show it's behind. Sean, Rebecca, I sent you the attachment. Say Excuse again? me. I sent you the document. And email. Me? Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Appreciate yeah. it. So, again, we're going to be using calculating aspects. Read that document because it, it, it kind of explains the, the math that we're doing. You're going to need the document of the chart that has uh, Virgo rising, one degree Virgo rising, and you're going to need the aspect calculation form. Damn. Okay. okay. So thank you for your patience. We're going to do this and we're going to do this for the next two weeks. This is what's up for the next two weeks, working on aspects. You can read, um, you know, I'll send you a list of documents because you can read the other documents on the description of the aspects. Because as we are calculating the aspects, you're gonna remember what this damn aspect is about because you're, you're gonna have to work hard to get there. And fortunately, when you work hard to get to where you wanna go, you, re you remember differently. So we are. Um, and if you're just it's smart like Rodney, Rodney's just. Yeah, not like Rodney. No, 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 no. Rod Rodney's going to keep us all, particularly <laughs> me. Rodney's going Yeah, Rodney, we are in something, and um, I'll go over that too. We are in something called mutual reception. You have Sun in Taurus and Moon in Cancer. Is that correct? Yes. Well, actually, uh, Cancer is my. Right. Well, anyhow, our mutual reception. Is, um, I have uh, I have Sun in Cancer. I mean, I have Moon in Taurus. So th that's why I I allow you to correct me. <laughs> Let me stop my nonsense. But it, yeah, it's it's time to um, we can stop the recording and get ready to. Uh, um, leave the class.